This is the Mercedes-Benz Arena, located in the heart of Stuttgart, home to its football team, VfB Stuttgart. Stuttgart is a membership-based club with over 72,000 members and is the 8th largest club in Germany. Stuttgart has won a total of 5 Bundesliga and 3 DFB Pokals. They also won the Intertoto Cup twice in 2000 and 2002, but there's a competition for you to go and Google. Their last Bundesliga title was in the 2006-2007 season, and their last trophy was following a relegation as they were promoted back to the Bundesliga in 16-17. After yo-yoing for a few seasons, they have now established themselves as a Bundesliga side. Can we take them further? Let's rebuild VFB Stuttgart. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Frankly FM84. Thank you for coming back and joining me on another video right here on the YouTube channel. So today we are going to be taking on another rebuild challenge. You might have guessed from the thumbnail, from the description and from what you can now see on screen. We today are going to be taking on a rebuild job at VFB Stuttgart, one of Germany's proudest football teams, the eighth biggest team in German football. However, in recent times, they've had it a little bit tough, becoming a bit of a yo-yo team, going up and down, getting themselves relegated and then promoted. Finally, they are establishing themselves as a Bundesliga team, although they did have it tough in the uh, season that has just finished in real life. We, though, have a chance to change their path in the game. We're going to take over for the 21-22 season and go forwards for four years to see how we can rebuild Stuttgart. Can we turn them back into German footballing powerhouses? Can we challenge the likes of Bayern Munich, Borussia Dortmund and Red Bull Leipzig who have come along in the past couple of years with all of that cash from their Austrian backers? So... That is the task that is in front of us. Let's jump into the game then. You can see we've got it loaded up here. We are on a brand new save. Let's start off as always with a little bit of club info and the background of the club. You can see they were founded in 1893. They're a professional team with a three and a half star reputation. Their finances describe them as rich. but The media prediction only says they are due to finish 14th. So in the first season, this could be quite difficult. Quick look then at the players that they have at the club. The current uh, club captain is Wataru Endo. He's a 28-year-old Japanese defensive midfielder. Uh, their vice captain is Waldemir Anton. He's a 24-year-old defensive midfielder. He's vice captain. Uh, he's also their key player in terms of uh, the first team. And their top prospect is Lauren Ulrich, a 16-year-old central midfielder who is also German. So... Looking over their team then, in the past they have had some legends at the club. Carl Olgoer, Guido Buchwald, Robert Schielens, Rolf Blessing, George Wurzer. They've got some uh, icons there as well. Carl Heinz Foster, those kinds of players. I think uh, Mario Gomez should probably be on that list somewhere in terms of uh, players that left the club and then came back. And he did all he could to help them to get back into the Bundesliga and stay in the Bundesliga once they were there. So they've had some success across the years. Let's have a little look at the trophies that they've won then. So five Bundesliga trophies, 1950, 52, 84, 92 and 2007. That was the last time they've won the top flight. Since then, they have been relegated more times than they have won the trophy. Uh, the DFB Pokal, uh, 54, 58 and 97. One Bundesliga, two trophy. That was 2017 when they got promoted back to the Bundesliga. But they have been up and down again since then. Uh, one DFL Super Cup in 1992 and one German Second Division South EXT. And that was in uh, 1977. So looking at their uh, current positions or positions that they're finishing across the past few seasons then. So like 2010-11 here, they finished 12th and then 6th, and then a steady decline back to 15th, to 14th, and they had a relegation season where they finished 17th, uh, promoted as winners of the Bundesliga, back up as high as 7th in the Bundesliga before relegated again in 18-19, promoted once again in 19-20, and finally a ninth place finish 2021. As I said, in real life, they just narrowly avoided relegation in real life in 21-22, and that is what we are going to look 
to turn around. So let's have a look at the finances that are available at the club. As you may have saw, they are described as a rich team. They have £71.1 million in the bank at the beginning of the game. They are going to make a grand total of zero available to us to rebuild the team. Uh, luckily for us, the transfers are turned off in the first window anyway, so we don't need that money in terms of um, transfer budget. You can see that next season's minimum guaranteed will be zero as well. Uh, in terms of a wage budget, 332,000 available to us with 313,000 currently spending. Uh, so a nice kitty once we get our hands on it and also not masses of wage budget left to work with, but there are some available to us once we get into that January window and we are available to sign players. Uh, in terms of the club vision then, let's see what the club want. Remember, media think they're going to finish 14th. Let's see what the club themselves want. So in the first year, they want to strive to make progress on and off the pitch as club culture. So nothing even to achieve in that category. But then five-year plan ongoing is to work within the wage budget, which we are currently doing. They want to finish mid-table, reach the third round of the cup as a minimum, and then work towards recording a Bundesliga top half finish. Contract gets renewed. <clears throat> and going forward, they just want to be a top half club. So hopefully, with those low expectations, we can far exceed what the board want and pretty easily have a good feeling that with the money that's going to be available and the kind of squad that we're going to look to build, I really do think this could be a very, very good rebuild. So last thing to look at then is the squad. Let's start off with the assistant report and show you what they think our best 11 is. Uh, so Muller in goal, Sosa, Carazor, Anton, Stenzel, Mangala, Forster, Endo, Tommy, Mavumpa and Kaladzic up front. So some interesting names in there. I think there's a few players there that might be out on loan, which is why they're greyed out. So our best 11 players aren't even all at the club. Uh, if we look at the players, though, and look at the contract situation, you can see once we sort by expiry date, there are a lot of players whose contracts are about to expire in terms of players that we have loaned in. Mavra Panos, he is from Arsenal, I believe, so he will probably end up back there at the end of the first season. And then there are some contracts to sort out along the way, but nothing really major in terms of losing first team players. And we can sort that out pretty easy anyway. So then. That is pretty much what we are going to be starting with. And this is the beginning of the rebuild journey. It's only one way from here. And that is forward. We have four seasons to try and get this team as far as we can. Let's jump into season one and show you how we get on at the start of the Stuttgart rebuild. Here we go then. This is the start of the rebuild, the end of season one. And as always, we're going to start off with the transfer business that we have done, both the players that have left the club and the players that have come into the club. Again, a reminder, we couldn't spend any of that kitty until the start of January. So we are only looking at transfers that have happened after the first of January. Let's start off with the players that left the club then. A uh, few free players, no real major outs. Lucas Laupheimer, the only one, oh no, sorry, Sven Schiplock, the only one who went out for a fee, £105,000. There was Thomas Castanaris, um, there was Lucas Laupheimer, Enzo Milo went out on loan, and Alexis Tibidi went out on loan also. So that's the players that have left. Uh, we did re manage to recoup across the season £33 million, which I presume is where most of that money in the transfer kit has come from, and that was from sales in July before the game has kicked off but then we started to reinvest that in the team so we went for a kind of blend of youth and players that I think can be good in the long term we also have started to raid Portugal there are a lot of good players in Portugal so let's show you Vasco Souza is the first one 1.7 million pounds he is a midfielder who can play either as a normal midfielder or an attacking midfielder all through the centre. A bargain really he has all the attributes that are needed for a five-star potential player against our own team, as you could see there. We then signed Miguel Montenegro. He is a player who, again, is one for development, 21 years old. Probably not going to get too much better, but if we needed somebody who could step in 
and do a job as a DM or an MC, we could use him. The next one through the door was Francisco Ginella. If you've been watching any of these rebuilds, you would see that this kid is actually really underrated. He comes from America, LAFC. He's a Uruguayan with 820 caps. He's dirt cheap. And in the first season of the save, he's able to just go straight in and be an upgrade in the middle of the park. One that I absolutely love for the money. I mean, 850,000 rising up to a million is an absolute bargain. Joe Resende is the next one. Another Portuguese player coming from Benfica. Again, not the finished article at the start of the game. Only 19 years old, but finishing a 13 pace and acceleration are there. Determination is good. Technique is good. Work rate, vision, uh, teamwork. Those kinds of things are all there. So... For the price that we paid, which was uh, £1.7 million, definitely one for the future. The next one that came in was Datro Fofana. He's a player that we came across on another uh, rebuild video. Um, didn't really know much about this guy until I had him in one of my teams. And now I think for the money, again, he's an essential player at the start of every rebuild that you can go, especially if you're not managing in England with work contracts and work permits, those kinds of things. Uh, if you're managing on the continent, you can get him in. He's dirt cheap. And look at the acceleration, the pace, the natural fitness, determination, flair, work rate. Uh, it's all there. Finishing 12, dribbling 12. He can play as a striker. He can play off the wings. Datro Fofana is a player that is actually criminally underrated in the game. Uh, let me know if you've heard of him in the comment section down below. Like I said, you might have seen him on one of the other rebuild videos, but he is a bit of a gem at the start of the game. And then Pione Sisto is the next one to come in. He is a Danish player. Uh, again, for the money we paid, about £4 million. It's all about pace of 14, acceleration 14, dribbling of 16, first touch 15. Basically, we were sculpting our team to have two killer wingers that could just cut in off of the wings, get into the middle of the pitch and finish. Also, they're going to terrorise people with their dribbling, their pace. And I think at, what was it, £4.2 million, I think he's an absolute bargain. So those are the signings that we made. We really normally would try and shore up the defence, but I think the defence was OK at Stuttgart to begin with. So we started off trying to get forward players. We've got midfielders and we've got those quick, tricky wingers. Did it do the trick? Remember, we were quoted at finishing 14th by the media at the start of the game if we hit the competitions tab you can see we finished third 67 points is a long way behind Bayern Munich we were 10 points behind Borussia Dortmund we finished runner-up also in the DFB Pokal so we hit the target for that um it's big progress they wanted mid-table we have finished third we have qualified for the Champions League also let's jump into the Bundesliga then and show you exactly what happened there you can see in terms of our win-loss record it's 27 and 7 goal difference of 31 so maybe the defense isn't as watertight as I thought it was at the start of the game we did pick up 67 points actually Munch and Gladbach finished on 67 as well but due to our goal difference we finished third they finished fourth Looking at the player stats then, you can see that it is an absolute blank in terms of player stats for the Bundesliga. We weren't flashy, we weren't spectacular, but we were consistent. And that was the reason why we finished so high as we did. If we jump to the home screen, though, we can have a little look at our own players. Thiago Thomas was our top goal scorer. Uh, Silas Katompa Mavumpa was our highest average rating and also most assists with 10. Uh, Waldemir Anton, best pass completion. Uh, most player of the match awards was Mavumpa as well. Uh, Mavra Panos was 15 yellow cards. And Pascal Stenzel being the naughty boy with a single red card. So that is how we got on in the first season. Let's have a little look at the finances for the second season then. So our bank balance is now £130 million. And the war chest to go and buy players with next season is going to be £32.8 million. So a sizable wage budget there. Uh, sorry, a sizable transfer budget there. In terms of the wage budget, 413000 available, 397 spent. But committed spending for next season is £288,000. So there's a big gap there. And if we get the right players in and move the right players on, we are going to have an absolute comfortable 
amount of money and wages to go and try and sign as good a players as we can. A look at the club vision then. So club culture now has started to come into the club. If you remember at the start, it was just uh, wanting to develop the club's reputation. Obviously, finishing third is going to be doing that. So they want us to now play attacking football, play entertaining football, play high tempo pressing football, which my tactic should uh, have all of those in the 4 3 3, 4 5 1, whichever way you look at it. Uh, the five year plan is to work within the wage budget, so we're on course for that. By the end of next season, now they want us to be mid table and reach the group stage of the Champions League as a minimum. They want to record a Bundesliga top half finish and then maintain that top half finish all the way through to the end of the five seasons. So, a little bit more of an expectancy from the board to be performing in the league, but I think that's going to be a given anyway, considering we far exceeded our season expectation and finished third. So, not a problem there. And then finally, let's have a little look at the squad and the assistant report to show you what it thinks our best 11 currently is. So, Muller in goal, Sosa, Mavropanos, Anton, Stenzel, Mangala, Ginella and Endo, and then Sisto, Mavumpa and Fofana up top. So even though Fofana was signed as a winger, he can obviously play coming in off of the wings, but he can also play as a striker. That was seemingly where he was at his best across this first season. He got the goals and was our top goal scorer, I believe. So um, Sisto and Mavumpa assisting him, but... Eventually, we're going to sign a striker, and now we've got even more money to go out and spend. I think a striker is inevitable. So, can we continue the upward trend? We are currently a long, long way off of Bayern Munich. That is the gap that we need to shrink. Let's move into Season 2 and continue the rebuild at Stuttgart. Can we close that gap? Here we go, then. This is the end of Season 2. We are now on the 1st of June, 2023. As always, we are going to start off with the transfer business, and there was a lot of it. You can see just by looking at the screen, we have spent 77 million. We've recouped 54 of it, though, so there has been a lot of movement in and out. Let's start off with the right hand side. Um, Maxim Awuja was the first one to go out, as was Daniel Di Davi. Uh, they both left on free transfers, nothing really doing in terms of renewing contracts. But then the big one that Bought us another bulk of transfer fee in was Silas Katompa Mavumpa going to uh, Red Bull Leipzig. £30 million they bid and we couldn't really turn it down. Didn't want to sell him but he didn't want to stay. So we snapped their hands off and took that. We'll show you how we reinvested it in a moment. Kaladzic went to Hanover as did Karazor. Philip Forster left to go to Heidenheim. 575000 then Endo left to go to STVV for 1.7. Uh, Florian Muller to CSK in Moscow for 2.5 million. Uh, Klimovic went to Heideheim on loan. There's a few more loans there. Uh, Pablo Mafio went to Newcastle for 7.75. Another one who said he didn't want to stay, so we didn't want to keep him. Borna Sosa to Shakhtar Donetsk for 6.5 million. Uh, there was Darko Cherlinov. He went to Gruyffer for 575000 So those are the players that we had let go, which meant that we now had a massive amount of money and a lot of holes in the team to go out and buy players. So the first player that actually came in was Konstantinos Mavropanos. I forgot when I said uh, I don't think he'll be at the club much longer after his uh, loan deal. Uh, I forgot that they had already committed to buying the player. So for £2.6 million, it's not a bad signing. He can be a rotation option. I think, though, we can have some upgrades. We then signed Rodrigo Fernandez from Porto B on a free transfer. Nothing groundbreaking there. But then we start to see a few familiar faces. Comrade De La Fuente has come in from Marseille. £12.5 million. He is a replacement for Mavumpa. We then went and bought our old friend Mr. Sheshko. Uh, another one. Don't really want to sign all the same players in these kinds of saves, but we needed a striker and basically we needed goals. If Fofana was our top goal scorer last season, we needed strikers. So we went out and bought him and obviously you know you're going to get goals from there. Fran Navarro came in from Gil Vicente for £1.5 million. Didn't really get a lot of game time. Was going to be an option for Sheshko, but Sheshko was so good in this season. There was no way he was ever going to be dropped. Uh, Roman Berkey then came in for £6.25 million, a solid goalkeeping option. Wanted to leave uh, Dortmund, 
Asked for a transfer to go and do other things. We came along, snapped him up and gave him exactly what he wanted. Uh, David Carmo came in for £3 million. Solid centre-back that came rated via our scouting network. The next player, Michael Costa, a young German left-back or right-back, can play either side. Doesn't look like he has a lot of potential at the moment, but I think he has a future prospect label, and I think he will develop further down the line. The next player was Mark Rocker. Doesn't really need any um, introduction. Spanish player, playing for Bayern Munich. We snapped him up when he was put on the transfer list. I'm not too sure why he was there, but he... Uh, is a solid player who was an upgrade to our midfield. The next player was Felix Nemeca, came from Wolfsburg. Another quick player who can play through the middle or he can play on either wing, so options there. Josip Stanisic was the next one. He came from Bayern Munich, Croatian defender, who has uh, two caps for his national team. Was dirt cheap when Bayern put him on transfer list. He can play anywhere across the back. So again, versatility is key for these kinds of signings. We then signed Joaquin Piquerez. He's a left back. You can also play in midfield as a desperation option, but uh, a bit of a backup in terms of wing backs, considering we are a bit light at the position. Burke Risa was another one who came from Mulder, only £2 million. And again, another uh, left back that can play a, in, as a centre back too. So a bit of versatility again. Then we signed Malang Sar for £2.9 million. This one the board were happy with. Um, again, can play at left back, can play at centre back, so versatility there. But he has slotted himself in as a centre back and has been playing really, really well on the left hand side. Only two players left. Suat Sardar is another midfield upgrade coming. Um, did we get him straight from Hertha Berlin or did he come from somewhere else? No, he came. From Hertha Berlin, £2.7 million. Another player who can just slot into the middle. Bit of a rotation option too, but he was an upgrade on what we had. And then Fabricio Diaz is another face that you will have seen on a few of these uh, rebuild videos. He's young at the start, plays for Liverpool, but not that Liverpool. 20 years old, has everything that you need really in a developing central midfielder or defensive midfielder. Passing, he has good stamina, pace, natural fitness. He has good teamwork, vision, work rate. It's all there. Everything that he's going to need. And we know how he develops into a wonderful footballer. So that's all of the transfers done. There has been a lot of movement in and out of the club. Did it disrupt us or did it help us? Let's jump into the competitions tab for season two and see what happened. We lost the league by a single point. We were this close on the last day. Bayern were drawing. We were winning. Um... Yeah, we thought we were going to win the league at one point and then Bayern won their game and we ended up uh, one point behind. So a little bit devastated at that, but it shows how much either Bayern have declined or we have improved that we are now only one point behind them and hot on their heels. Uh, in terms of the Champions League, knocked out in the first round by Arsenal. A bit disappointing there. Thought we had a decent chance of going on a bit of a run. And then in the DFB Pokal, we got knocked out in the quarterfinals by our old foes, Bayern Munich. So let's break down the Bundesliga campaign then. You can see that in terms of our win-loss record, we now have played 34, won 24, drawn 6, lost 4. Goal difference is up to 53 and the points at 78. Now, I said that we needed a goal scorer and the familiar face was coming in and we seem to have got the good Benjamin Sheshko. Um, not too sure how much of a range is in his potential ability, but whatever is this version of Sheshko, he got 25 Bundesliga goals in his first campaign and topped the goal scoring charts, earning himself a nice bonus along the way. In terms of average rating, Borna Sosa 7.65. Uh, Pione Sisto, another player we brought in, 15 assists across the season. And for a change, we do not have anybody in the uh, Most Yellow Cards award. So everybody behaving themselves quite well. If we go to the home screen and look at our own stats then. So Sheshko got 29 goals in all competitions, a 7.29 average rating. Sisto got 17 assists. Anton was at our best pass completion. Most player with the match awards went to Sheshko. Clinton Moller got 13 yellow cards, so he was only just off of that naughty boys list. 
and Berg Reeser was the real naughty boy with one red card. So in terms of the finances for the next season, so the wage, um, sorry, no, the bank balance, the overall bank balance is going up and up and up. This club just benefiting from these Champions League finishes. £186 million in the bank. Now means we have £57.9 million to spend. We are pretty much going to go out and just try and blitz the next season. Uh, 920000 in terms of the wage budget. Spending 723 So a big gap there. Nearly £200,000 to go and invest in players. Obviously we'll move some on as well. So that gap there will widen and shorten but on the whole it is going to be a good good season if we can spend all of that money a quick look at the club vision tab then so the play high attacking football play entertaining football play high tempo pressing football are still in place work within the wage budget and the board still haven't really got ambitious for next season but it does start to crank up later on so next season Bundesliga top half finish and the group stage of the Champions League then they want the qualification for the Europa League, then to qualify for the Champions League, and then they want us to establish ourselves as a Champions League qualifying team through the Bundesliga. So not the most outlandish of requests, but it is starting to creep up slowly as we are having more success, which is rightfully so. So the last thing to show you then is the squad. Let's have a little look at this assistant report. You can now see that our best starting eleven, according to our assistant, is Berkey in goal, Risa, Saar, Anton, Stanisic, Rocker, Serdar and Diaz, De La Fuente, Sisto and Sheshko. So a, a complete overhaul of the entire team. There is only Anton in that lineup. That would have been there at the start of the game. So it shows that we have had a big rebuild job, but it is starting to pay dividends that impressive second place in the Bundesliga and closing the gap to Bayern Munich means that we are within touching distance of them but can we go out and spend that money that transfer kitty and overhaul them in season three let's jump forward and continue the Stuttgart rebuild it's now then the 7th of June 2024 we have jumped forward another season and as always, we are going to show you the transfer dealings both in and out. Last season, there was a lot of quantity, £77 million spent and a load of players coming in to bulk the squad out. This year, despite having a bigger transfer budget, we went out and only bought players that we think were essential. But let's start off with the players that left the club. Uh, so Stenzel went to Wolfsburg for £2 million. Bredlow went to Almeria for 525000 And Samuel D. Benedito, he went to uh, one FCN for £425,000. So only recouping £3 million. And then we are putting a big outlay into the team. You can see we spent £88 million. So Thiago Thomas starts the game on loan at the club from Sporting. There is an option in there to buy him for the fee that is suggested of £12.75 million. So I think that's a bit of a steal. He's a bit of a wonder kid on these games. And I think that he, for that price, that's a bargain. The next one we went out and signed was Galino from FC Porto. Another quick winger, pace of 18, acceleration of 17, agility 16. You can see what we're really doing here. In terms of trying to kill teams on the break, we want fast players off the wings, cutting inside, who can finish. 13 finishing there for him as well. And you can see that... He's going to be a player that will complement the others that are in those positions. The big signing of the window, though, was Anthony Alanga from Manchester United. We put a big outlay on him. The scouts were really keen. We didn't think we were going to get him. He's young, 22. He has pace of 18, acceleration 17, finishing at 12, dribbling 14, work rate 14. So, again, another player who fits the quick, young, tricky winger mould who can also play up top if needs be. And I think he's a sound player for the future. Uh, Yusuf Yazici was next. Uh, so he was brought in as a central midfielder. Another one who is an upgrade at the position. I felt that we were doing well in central midfield. But we just needed that player who was going to push us on to the next level. And I think this is the guy to do it. Passing a 16, technique of 17, teamwork, vision, work rate. He has decent pace at 13, acceleration at 12, aggression, dribbling, first touch. 
It's all there. It's everything you want your central midfielder to do. He cost us £16.75 million, pounds, and I think it could turn into a bit of a steal. The last player then that we signed for this season is Bremer. He is a player I've seen on a few videos, never actually got to manage him. This is the opportunity that I took to bring him in. 27-year-old uh, Brazilian, plays as a centre-back. He's a no-nonsense type of defender. Tackling the 17, pace 14, acceleration 13, jump and reach 16, strength 17, anticipation 17, aggression 14. He's got everything that you need to be a world-class centre-back. So those are the players then that are going to shape the season. Could they overturn Bayern Munich? Let's jump into the competitions tab and show you that we did indeed overturn Bayern Munich. It's took three seasons, but we have won the Bundesliga. So that is the first objective ticked off. You can also then go along the tabs and see we got knocked out in the group stages in the Champions League in a group with Benfica, Lazio and Shakhtar. Pretty disappointed we didn't qualify. However, that turned into a bit of a blessing. As you can see, we have won the Europa League. Let's have a little look through at the Europa League path. We go all the way back to the second knockout round, which is, I think, where we enter. We beat Everton in the second knockout round. We then played in the quarterfinal against Valencia. And we beat them 9-4 uh, on aggregate, which was absolutely ridiculous. In the semi-final, we come up against Tottenham. We won that 3-1 on aggregate. And then in the final, we faced off against AS Monaco, winning 2-1 in extra time to lift our first European trophy of the rebuild so that's one bundesliga one uefa europa league we again finished runners up in the dfb pokal by munich i think yeah we come across by munich on a good day three nil victors for them and did they beat us in the super cup too of course they did they won two one in the super cup so let's show you the bundesliga campaign then and show you what happened throughout that season you can see our win-loss record now is 27-1, three drawn, four losses, a goal difference of 50, but vitally 84 points on the board left us four points clear of Bayern Munich, which meant that we had the title won with a game to spare. Looking at the player stats, Benjamin Sheshko turned in another great season, another 23-goal haul. In terms of average ratings, he topped the list there with 7.5 rating. Galino coming in, one of the new signings, had a 7.48 Assists, Galino, 13 assists in his first season means that he was an absolute steal from, um, I think, who did we pick him up from? Was it Porto? He's not wearing a Porto shirt there, but it was indeed Porto who must have bought him from Braga. Uh, in terms of player of the match awards, Datro Fofana still doing his thing, picking up six player of the match awards. And then luckily for us, nobody in the last two categories. We go to the home screen and show you our own stats, though. Benjamin Sheshko is on fire. 36 goals in this season. Yusuf Yazici getting the highest average rating at 7.46. Sisto most assists with 15. Bremer the best pass completion. Fofana most player of the matches with 8. Uh, Risa getting the most yellow cards. He was on the naughty list for the red cards last season. He got himself off that, but onto the yellows. And then Clinton Mola getting two red cards is the real naughty boy. So then that is the season that we have had. It's a Bundesliga in the bag. It's a UEFA Europa League in the bag. Let's show you what the club want for next season. Firstly, in terms of finances, £160 million now in the bank, which gives us another transfer kitty of £68.9 million. This is the first save that I think I have gone all out and tried to have a bit of a blowout and get as many top quality players as I could. In some of the other rebuilds, there was a little bit of limitation in terms of the wage structure or in terms of not getting enough money, but... This club are just throwing money at the club and it's my job to go and spend it. In terms of the wage budget, £1.3 million, spending £1.191. So we've got a bit of room there in the wage budget. But again, as same as last season, players go out, players come in, it will shrink and contract based upon who, who moves out and then who we get in to replace them. Uh, looking at the club vision then, they want us to play attacking football. They're pleased to play entertaining football. They're pleased to play high tempo pressing football. Delighted. Make the most of set pieces. They're reserving judgment. Uh, they want us to work within the wage budget. We are doing that. Qualify for the Europa League. Reach the Champions League group stage again. And then work to 
wards being recognised as the best of the rest. So that five year plan keeps changing. No longer do they want us to qualify for the Europa League and then the Champions League. They just want to be best of the rest at the moment. So we are achieving most of our aims there. The last thing then, as always, to show you is going into the next season, what the squad looks like. And now our best 11, according to our assistant, is Berkey in goal, Brisa, Saar, Bremer and Stanisic, Roca, Yazici, Diaz, Elanga, Galino and Sheshko. So a wonderful team here of young, talented players built on a rock of a defence with a goalkeeper who is outstanding. I think this rebuild is going completely the way we wanted. There is one season left. Can we go one further? Can we retain our Bundesliga title? And can we go and win the Champions League? Let's jump forward to the final season of the save and show you what happens as we continue the Stuttgart rebuild. After last season's successes then of winning the Bundesliga and winning the Europa League, we are now looking to kick on and hopefully defend the Bundesliga and go further in the Champions League than we have before. We once again have had to overhaul parts of the squad. We've let a few players go and we have plugged the gaps in the squad that we needed to plug. So let's start on the right hand side. One of our key players, Waldemir Anton, left the club on a free transfer. Uh, Mavropanos, who came in at the start to say he has left to go to finals, £1.1 million. Uh, Lorin Ulrich has gone to Bayern, or Bayer 04, Leverkusen, uh, for £5.25 million. We then loaned out Milo. Uh, Klimovic went to Racing Club for 675000 David Carmo, who came in, wasn't happy that he wasn't playing games, went to Hoffenheim for £3.4 million. Tango Koulibaly, Went to SCPO7, uh, £2.2 million for that one. And then Fabrizio Diaz, we got a £12.5 million bid for him. Um, he's a player that I absolutely love in the game. But when you get the transfer budgets that we are getting, I think upgrades are necessary. And that is exactly what we have done. So we went out and spent £67 million. We started off by signing Oscar Mingiza. He came from Barcelona, another player who can play naturally across the back line anywhere. He has decent pace and acceleration at 14 with tackling. He has good work rate. His composure is 15, bravery is 15, anticipation 15. This was a no-brainer. As soon as he was available, yes, please, get it done. And for the bargain price of £7.75 million too. The next player was Caligari. He came from AS Monaco for £10.75 million. Obviously, he didn't start the game there, but he's another one who can play at right back. Can also play as a makeshift midfielder, which is good for his versatility. Um, lots of players having to play lots of games now with the Champions League and everything going on in the save. So to have that squad depth is vital. The next one is Kevin Mababu. He come from Wolfsburg. He, again, is a right back, but can also play left back and centre back as a makeshift. Uh, 30 years old, he's a Swiss international, uh, good pace, good acceleration, good stamina, everything really you need to be a very good wing back, uh, 15 for tackling, so he isn't going to let too many players pass him down that side. The next one, Matteo Lovato, rock solid Italian centre back, um, bit of a bargain price considering how good he is, and now we have centre backs that are Lovato, Bremer and Malang Sarr. Um, yeah, not too much to say about Lovato. He's just rock solid. Ethan Laird was the next player to come in. Another player to cover, cover either left or right back. Uh, he can do both of those things. Uh, lots of rotation options. Like I said, the squad needs to be big considering the amount of competitions we are in. A familiar face popping up. Johnny Kenny is a player who seemingly is flying under the radar on a lot of these saves. I thought we'd pick him up in case Sheshko had an injury or something was to happen to him, but he didn't get much game time. He still, though, is a decent option in terms of rotation. Uh, Danny Ceballos is the next one. £8.75 million pounds from this time. Uh, again, an upgrade in the central midfield position. Was cheaper to buy than what Diaz was to sell. So it was a bit of a no-brainer that we got rid of one midfield out, bought another one in. Christian Eriksen then came in and this signing was the catalyst, I think, for very good things happening at the club. In real life, 
obviously wishing well with everything that happened. He's a free agent, can choose where he wants to go. But in this game, um, we managed to pick him up. Who did we actually sign him from? We picked him up from Chelsea for £9.25 million. And he still oozes class, even at the age of 33. All those green stats, first touch, free kick taking, long shots, passing, technique, work rate, vision, teamwork. This is an elite player and we managed to get him for £9 million. It was an absolute steal. We then went and reaffirmed our centre midfield with Ricky Puig, a player who came in on a big wage at 140000 but we thought we're going to do it because he's worth it. And then the final player to come in is Patrick, £1.8 million from Lazio. Um, yeah, 32 years old is a bit older than what we probably would have liked to have signed a player. But then again, with a lot of youngsters in the team, a bit of experience always goes a long way. So those are the transfer deals that we have done. Were they worth it? Did they get us to where we want to be? Let's hit the competitions tab in 2025 and show you. We have again won the Bundesliga and we have defended it successfully. Uh, the big shock there is Freiburg finishing in third place, I think. Um, they were right up there for a lot of the season. and They had some really good games against the bigger teams. However, luckily for us, that four-point gap once again coming in. 74 points, though. It's uh, a lot lower than what we would have thought. Um, Champions League, we wanted to do a lot better. This time we reached the semi-finals, knocked out by Juventus in the semi-finals. They would go on to win the competition, so no shame in losing to the winners. Uh, we were the runner-up in the UEFA Super Cup, so can't add that. Uh, lost to Manchester City 4-1 in a one-off game for that. Um, yeah, Manchester City are Manchester City. Uh, the DFB Pokal, we got knocked out in the semi-finals by Borussia Dortmund. And we finished runner-up again in the DFL Super Cup, which I presume is, again, Bayern Munich lost 4-2 in that one. So let's show you the Bundesliga then in terms of the campaign that we have just had. You can see our one-loss record is 124, drawn two. We did lose eight games, though. A goal difference of 59, points of 74. And we had a very, very good campaign. Benjamin Sheshko getting his top goal scoring haul of 26 league goals. Average ratings. Look at Christian Eriksen. At his age, 33, 7.82 average rating. Sheshko and Bremer round out the top three. All of the steps on the podium for us in the average ratings department. In terms of assists, Yusuf Yazici, he got 11. So again, even though Eriksen is on the average ratings, our other midfielder is popping up with the assists. Benjamin Sheshko, player of the match awards. And luckily for us, nothing in the other two categories once again. So to the home page, and Benjamin Sheshko has scored 34 goals across the season. He also has the highest average rating, 7.45. Yusuf Yazici getting 19 assists in all competitions. Lovato was the best pass completion. Sheshko getting the most man of award, man of the match awards with eight. Kevin Mabu. Mab Mababu, don't know what I was reading there. Kevin Mababu, 16 yellow cards. That was probably why I was shocked too. And then most red cards is Mark Rocker, Joachim Pucares, Caligari and Patrick. So four naughty boys in this season. So we are going to leave the club then at the end of this season. And we leave them with £193 million in the bank. £52 million available for the next manager. A wage budget now of two point. 072 million pounds spending 1.894 million pounds so a lot of room there for a new manager to come in and put a stamp on the team and also a lot in terms of the transfer budget in terms of the club vision you can see that overall for the past season we got a b plus uh, they were pleased with the leadership of the team in terms of what they had set us out in terms of the club vision and culture now uh play attacking football yes play entertaining football yes Play high tempo, pressing football, yes. Make the most of set pieces, they were pleased with that. Now added on to that though, is sign players under the age of 23 for the first team, so wanting to go with youth. A uh, five year plan ongoing, work within the wage budget, qualify for the Champions League through the Bundesliga. Uh, Champions League, reach the group stages, become recognised as best of the rest, and that is the key going forwards. So then, a final look at the squad and what the assistant thinks is our best 11 at the end of 
the four seasons. So Berkey, Risa, Saar, Bremer, Mingeza, Roca, Yazici, Ericsson, Alanga, Fofana and Sheshko. So we have completely rebuilt the team. We have gone on and we have won Bundesliga. We have won the Europa League. Let's go back to the um, home screen. Show you the trophies won then. So seven Bundesliga now. 24-25 defending our title in back-to-back -back seasons. We have one Europa League that came in 2024 and nothing else in terms of the Cups. A couple of DFB Pokal final appearances which we lost. And yeah, in terms of the club, they are now up to a four and a half star reputation club. They are rich. The media are still predicting us to finish fourth, but we are winning the league so that has been the stuttgart rebuild let me know in the comment section what you think of the rebuild i think it's been pretty successful we have done exactly what we wanted we wanted the bundesliga we won it we wanted a continental competition it was the europa league not the champions league we still reached that semi-final and considering that stuttgart were a yo-yo club before we were there narrowly avoiding uh, relegation in real life we have turned them into a footballing powerhouse within germany that, I think, is another successful rebuild. That then was our VFB Stuttgart rebuild. I think it was pretty successful. We managed to win two Bundesligas and break the dominance of Bayern Munich. We also went and won the Europa League after we got knocked out of the Champions League before going on to a Champions League semi-final. And I think in terms of what we wanted to achieve in raising the profile of Stuttgart and getting them back to the top of German football, we certainly have achieved that. If you're still at this point of the video, you're still listening to me. Firstly, a big thank you. Secondly, if you haven't hit the like and subscribe button, please consider doing so. It helps the channel so much. It gets these videos out to more people, helps the channel to grow and helps me to continue bringing this kind of content to you. But for this one, I'm going to be wrapping it there. A big thank you for watching. Go and check out some of the other videos on the channel. And for this one, I'm done. I'll catch you on the next one.